Hello clubbers GM 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 what's up how have you been thank you so much for watching the video in today's video what we're going to discuss are what are the different strategies to do a reveal a reveal of your nfts in a collection i've already discussed how to create an nft and nft smart contract in my previous video so if you don't know how to do that just go and check that out in this video i'm just going to explain in a smart contract nft smart contract how can we add post reveal which means that the user when they mint only then they are able to see the nft that they have minted but before we jump into that please make sure to hit that like button on this video subscribe to my channel if you have any questions leave a comment or join my discord community there are a bunch of other people over there who are very helpful and sometimes i also try to jump in to answer your questions i try to do gm daily over there so if you would like to hear from me more often please come and hang out with me on my discord channel the link is in the description all right with that said let's get started so now first question is why what is the motivation to do a reveal why not just put everything out there the problem with putting everything out there is that smart people will be able to figure out which ones are the rare mints and they will only mint those and use use that insider knowledge i would say to to get hold of the rare nfts which is not in the interest of the larger community which is why a lot of people want that reveal should be done after the mint is done so that you don't know what you're getting and that sort of makes it fair all right so there are three different strategies for reveal at least there are three which i could come up with uh, the first is that everything is revealed which means you put the revealed metadata into the smart contract and people can then just use that revealed metadata to mint the kind of nft that they want of course as i discussed earlier uh, this is not the right thing probably for the community as a whole as unsavvy users will be taken advantage of the other is server controlled where the nft is revealed just as a mint takes place so what you do is you create a server which is listening to the mint events and as soon as a token id comes up in that mint event or a transfer event what you do is you put a flag in the in your database with the with that metadata and just say that this is revealed so that whenever there is a query on that url you can just respond with the correct value if the token is not revealed you respond with a generic value generic metadata actually which basically just points to a hidden image kind of a thing cool cats had done something like this and it was very successful for them the advantage of this is that it doesn't require any gas uh, because you just put the url there and that is the url of your server uh, and that that will be used in the nft the problem though is that the community needs to trust your server so in case your domain goes down the nft's metadata is lost another thing you need to make sure here is that the image files should be in a random order image files that are not in random order what again a savvy user can do is just figure out what are the images and just you know take advantage of that and of course you need to make sure that a server is running and you need to create a server code it up and everything so it just adds extra bit of complexity to the whole code and of course the third thing that you can do is change the base uri of either the ipfs hash or if you want a server side even the server side and change the base uri to the full collection once the whole mint is done this is probably the most common strategy that is used out there and this is the one that we'll discuss in today's video this strategy requires gas but it's the simplest to implement simply because you don't need to create another piece of code another piece of structure another piece of software that you need to now maintain you don't need to do anything just change the ipfs hash it doesn't need to be ipfs by the way you can also use this strategy to change the server you want to do something else or server to ipfs or something like that uh, but yeah this is one of the strategy all right so i have the open zeppelin wizard open here and you can see i've selected the erc721 contract uh, one thing that you can add uh over here that you can see is a base uri so you can actually add ipfs colon slash slash and then whatever the ipfs cid is and add a slash so this base uri helps with generating the token uri for the specific token and then returns the metadata for it let's just make it in, in mintable and auto increments the ids and now we can open it in remix so now it's open in remix one thing that you will need to do first is basically create a variable called base uri that we can later change to change the reveal so what we can do is have a string uh, which is i don't know let's let it be public and uh, base uri as the method and the value of this can be uh, the value that i'm returning 
so this is that value and uh, i need to return the base uri over here now if we go and try to compile it there's an error because i forgot a semicolon i keep doing that but yeah now that i've added the semicolon it should compile out there could be a warning i'm not completely sure yeah there's a warning and it says the function declared as pure but this expression reads uh, from the state so it should be view and now it compiles uh, automatically another thing that we can do is uh, make sure that the token id is starting from one rather than zero and compile it again then we go and we try to deploy this once deployed uh, you can see that uh, there is a base uri method which will return this value and uh, now in the token uri if you press one right now it will give an error because we haven't minted anything now that i've minted it uh, i can go ahead and find the token uri and as you can see the token uri simply adds one at the end of the base uri so if you have let's say 10000 items you generate 10000 files of json put them in a folder put that folder on ipfs and take out the cid of that folder and then you can just simply put that uh, cid um, over here so let's say your your folder cid was this is the cid just for reference purpose of course it can't be that but yeah uh, once we compile this and then we um, do the same thing again uh, for no reason <laughs> you will see that after minting uh, the token uri for the first will be uh, ipfs colon slash slash this is the cid slash one great so what you will do is uh, while the thing is hidden you will respond with the token uri uh, where all the files all the metadata files they are pointing to a hidden file and they don't have any attributes so you can have let's say a metadata file which can have name which is your project and then based on the id uh, you can have an id as well one two three right uh, then the next thing that you can you will add is description uh, which will be again the description this is the description and then the third thing that you add is image which will point to an actual image so you can just be like ipfs colon slash slash uh, another cid right so another cid uh, and then this will always be hidden dot uh, png all right so make sure you don't put the un unhidden the revealed files in the another cid folder uh, because you know then somebody can just guess with one dot png or one dot jpeg or whatever uh, so what you do is you create like this and you create 10000 or how many items you have uh, you create copies of this file uh, with with that many number of files and then you just save it in a folder and upload it so that is one way another way probably you can do is have a variable which checks whether we have revealed or not and if we have revealed only in that case the token uri should respond with 1 2 3 4 otherwise it will always respond with hidden or something like that bunch of things to do but today we are just going to keep things simple so now how do we change this base uri because up until now we are just setting it um so to do that what you can do is create a function called change base uri and in the function you will accept a string uh, which will be going to the memory and uh, it will be base uri underscore and this function is a public function which only owner can call all right and now uh, what this function will do is basically set base uri and is equal to base uri underscore and this is how we will change our base uri so the next thing that what we'll do is compile the contract uh, which should compile perfectly i don't see any issues and it did um, i'm going to remove my previous contracts and deploy this one again once i mint something you can see that there is a token uri which is uh, coming called this is the cid i'm just increasing that font size so that it's much more visible so you can see that this is the cid is the value that is coming uh now let's say we want to change the base uri so what we can do is we can do ipfs colon slash slash and this is the revealed cid all right and then add a back add a slash as well forward slash as well so that you know it add when it adds one it doesn't make any issue now i click on transact the transaction goes through and now if i go and click go and click on the token uri you will see that the value will change from this is the cid cid to this is the revealed cid all right and this is how you sort of reveal 
a smart contract, reveal an NFT project actually. It's very simple to implement and, and work on. The major part that you will have to figure out is how do you generate the metadata and all. And that is something that is not part of the scope of this video. Now, if you don't want to even return one, two, three, and you just want to return hidden or something like that, in case the NFT is hidden, uh, then what you will do is you will create one more variable. Uh, the variable will be Boolean. Uh, also make it public and just have it revealed as a value and we will return false over here. Um, we will also create a function called change revealed public uh, needs to be a public function which the owner can call and it changes the value of revealed to underscore revealed. Now I've opened the open Zeppelin contract in the erc721.sol and what I've done is I've figured out the token URI method. So now what I'll do is I'll just simply copy this method and I'm going to paste it over here. Uh, make sure to remove the virtual from here and nothing needs to change. Uh, I will just reduce the zoom so that I can see the code. Now, now what you can see over here is that uh, it simply checks for the base URI method and it's, it returns something. The length is greater than zero, then it adds the token ID at the end, otherwise it returns uh, an empty string. So what we will do is uh, we will check if revealed, if it is revealed, uh, we are going to simply return the value just like this. Whatever was working uh, will remain working else if it is not revealed, we are going to return uh, the string of abi dot encode packed and here we need uh, the underscore base uri with uh, the value let's say hidden or hidden dot json whatever all right so uh, what we are doing is uh, we are uh, the abi encode packed basically what it does is it takes two byte arrays combines them and then we are casting that as string so uh, what we will we are doing is we are using the base URI and returning the hidden dot JSON from that base URI. Um, in case you want to add dot uh, JSON to the response uh, to the to the metadata file, uh, you can add dot JSON like this over here. Simply add a comma and then a third argument called dot JSON the the string dot JSON. All right, now let's go ahead and try to compile this. And I've already gotten an error. And the error is basically I forgot one <laughs> uh, one para, uh, parenthesis, one bracket closing. And I'm getting one more error because I'm trying to um, sort of uh, add the base URI again. So instead of this, what we are going to do is add underscore uh, at the end like this. Uh, another thing that I can do is just uh, take it out from the if condition, put it here. And uh, then uh, I just need base URI underscore and then I try to compile it still I'm getting an error and I was also getting another error because I was I had written dot two string over here so I've removed that uh, and I've compiled the contract and now it compiles perfectly so this is the code for the token URI uh, and now if I go and remove um, this one and I deploy the token again you will see that once I mint right once I mint it uh, you can also see that the current value of revealed is false. Great. And now uh, the token URI for the one is this is the CID slash hidden dot JSON. Now if I mint again and now I try to call for two, it's again hidden dot JSON. It doesn't change. All right. Uh, I'll just zoom in again uh, for you to see that it's hidden dot JSON. Now uh, let's do one thing before changing before changing or revealing what you should do is change the base uri and then you change the reveal uh, what to save gas one thing that we can do is change the base uri and reveal in the same method but i mean that is just something up to you uh, this is just for uh, <laughs> explanation purposes so uh, revealed let's say that's the <laughs> that's the cid uh, and i click on revealed and now this time, if I still call, you will see that it's revealed, but it's it has hidden dot JSON. So now to fix that, I'm going to say uh, turn the revealed value to true. And once I've done that, I click on call, and this time it says nothing dot JSON. 
because uh, this is not a string so now to fix this issue what i'm going to do i was just trying to avoid using the strings uh, but i i think i'll have to use uh, i'm going to import the strings uh, library for 4.4.2 now once i've imported the library that library gives me a method called strings dot two string which can take a u in 256 so now that i compile it once the compilation is done i deploy it again mint like a couple of times okay and now if i try, try to check the uri it says this is the cid and gives a hidden dot json all right so now what i can do is uh, i can change uh, the uri again to revealed and uh, once that is done i can also call true for change revealed and now if i click on 2 it says ipfs revealed 2.json so this is how you basically do a reveal for your nft smart contracts nft projects and all those things uh, we've discussed three strategies where one is where is everything is revealed the second is where it is server controlled uh, which has some pros and some cons and then the third which we have discussed in depth today is changing the base uri from unrevealed to revealed so i hope this video was useful for you if you like the whole video please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to my channel please leave a comment i really love reading your comments and if you have some deeper questions come join my discord the link is in the description uh, the community tries to help each other out thank you so much for watching the video i hope to see you again next week Bye bye